I get I get it wherever I go, cats be like, Knicks. And they expect me as a Knicks fan all of a sudden not to be a Knicks fan because we ain't winning. I mean, that, that's some, to me, I think that's a millennial yeah, issue. Nah, too. I can't like, do that. Yeah. You, you, nah, you we, we don't jump shit, man. We don't jump shit. It's like, come on, man. Matter of nah. fact, it's a beauty in coming up, man. It's a beauty in coming up. So you've been a Knicks fan through many phases. Many He's an OG, since 60, JL. He's seen since it all. 67. He's seen yeah, all, all the good man. things there is to see, man. He's seen Every, it all. I, you've seen, I, him, I, seen, you seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> There you we know go. Listen, George Kalinsky. George Kalinsky, right? 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 Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Shh, man. I, I, I've had this book a long time. It's dog in. How about this? <laughs> Older than me. This is my man. Earl, <laughs> Yo, Earl, Earl the Pearl. Right? Earl the Pearl. Yeah, got, exactly. The Pearl got, yeah, he said, Chuck, can you do a blurb for my nice, book? I nice, mean, nice, nice. You got to understand, these are heroes, man. And and and, and we, we spoke through culture and, and, and music, I mean, and entertainment and sports. Because that was the open, the, the obvious voice. I mean, I had the best father in the world. He's the king of kings. Outside of that, I found other people that I could also add in and compliment in there. So that was a beautiful thing. So seeing the heroes like later on, Kareem be befriended by Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Dr. J, Earl the Pearl, you know, George Gervin, all these guys that rappers named themselves after, like Ice Cube named himself after. After George Gervin, mm. Doctor Dre, Ice Man. Yeah, yeah, both yeah, Doctor yeah. Dre's dating themselves after Doctor J. You know, yeah. Earl the Pearl was in rhymes in the early nineteen eighties, man. The late seventies, man. Earl the Pearl was in everybody's rhyme, man. Mm, I dope. mean, Doctor J was in rhymes. So you know, later on, Daryl Dawkins comes out. He takes P Funk. He starts rhyming, and so the interplay was ridiculous, man. But. My thing back with the Knicks, I'm I'm from New York, man. My father's a Knicks fan. My father's a Met fan. My father also is a Jet fan. Why was he a Met fan and not a Yankee fan? I tell people all the time, not in my house. Because, <laughs> because, because, because let me tell you, my father was like, yo, Yankees was next to the last team that put black people on the team. I was like, <laughs> That's whoa. Right. That's and it. my father would tell me at five, six, seven, eight years old, he said, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. They had big power in the minor leagues. They didn't even want to bring them up, man. And it's like the Red Sox really ain't getting no love for me. So this is why I rarely ever you wore the Yankee, but you know, I let it go. You know, <laughs> time, things change. But when you give them the information on why is what as a fan, it's to the point. So I've been a Nick fan since 67. I cried when we lost to the Celtics. I didn't understand, but I really cried when we, when the, this is where I really cried. Cause I, later on, I kind of got it more. Mm -hmm. I didn't take the championship. It really, we got the championship, but I really have enough pain invested in as a nine year old, but mm -hmm. I got it the next year. Cause I thought the Knicks were going to win. And we lost to the bullets Girl, and the John pearl. Tresvant in game seven, man, killed us, man. <laughs> and Bradley missed the last, I think a last minute shot, Bradley missed a shot. And I was like, I couldn't believe it, man. Cause you know, we just, you know, we, we gonna get the chip again, right? Cause the Knicks were gonna face the Bucks and the Knicks were beating the Bucks up all year long. And the Bucks faced the Bullets who beat, you know, who beat the Knicks mm -hmm. and they and they swept them four zip. So I was like, damn, that chip could have been ours Opportunity two in a lost. row. And yeah. John, and look, you can look it up, John Tresvan. So when I actually mentioned it to the Pearl, he's like, start there, uh, he's like, Earl was like, oh man, my man John. <laughs> <laughs> so who's who was your favorite player back then for the Knicks? Willis Reed, no question. The captain. Man. Yeah. The captain. And then Walt Frazier, come on, man. Yeah, it was like it was a it was just amazing growing. And then the best, best thing ever, right, was a book called The Open Man I read in fifth grade. Mm. And it was a day-to-day -day diary. I think Dave the Busher and Dick Shap. And they gave you the day-to-day -day diary on behind the scenes with the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And that's the best book ever, man. Best book ever for a kid, man. <laughs> so the that legendary really Dick hooked Shep. me in it. Yeah, man, that really locked me into the Knicks, man. Gave the Bush to Bill Bradley. Come on, man. Dick Barnett, you know, fallback mm -hmm. baby. Fallback I mean, baby jumper. Never, we've, never seen a, jumper, yeah. we've never seen a jumper like that since, man. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, man. So talking about the Knicks... I'm not a person that just talks about back in the day. I like these times because of the energy, man. Mm -hmm. um, the leadership is the leadership is suspect because they seem <laughs> not to pick the right guys for the city. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So New York, New York is a melter, man. It will melt you, man. You microwave. come to soft in New York, yeah. Microwave Square Garden, y'all. <laughs> so you come in, man. The scopes is on you, and the scopes is bigger than ever before. You got social yep. media. Mm-hmm. New York was social media before social media. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's now it. Now put social media on top of New York. It's another planet, man. So they get they get burnt up, man. Like. Like, like, you know, like caterpillars in the sun, the magnifying glass. <laughs> it's tough, Chuck. It's tough, man. It's tough, man. But no, I feel y'all's pain, man. Every day I watch y'all on TV, I'm like, man, I feel for these young guys, man. Because <laughs> 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 it's been, listen, man, That's let's do the map. Let's do the map. I was, I was 12, right? When we won the chip, man. I'm going, I'm turning 60 this year. So we got <laughs> Cubs stories, man. We got Cubs stories. You, you, you know what, Chuck? But that that's why I had to embrace the Yankees. I had to embrace the Giants, at least to, to see some sort of championship. I'm not sure if it's going to happen for us. But at the same well, girl, time, I love the community that we build in here I, with Knicks fans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 20,000 20, deep. When I was coming up, man, let me tell you, I'm a Mets fan. My boy who lives around the corner, he a Yankee fan. You know, oh. Reggie Jackson, Nettles, yeah. all the whole yeah. nine, right? So he rubbing it in my face until 86. <laughs> and all my giant homies I grew up with, I mean, they win a chip. Like The Giants win a, win, win a chip every eight years, man. Mm. And, and I'm like, damn, man, I've been waiting since 69, man, for the Jets, man. So, I mean, you know, but it's, it's what it is. So that's the beautiful thing about sports in New York, man. We agree to disagree. Yep. And, and, and the absence of sports right about now across the map it, it, it's hurting because it's a welcome distraction yeah. and it's a teaching, it's a teaching vehicle to make you look at sports and also apply certain things to your life. And you know what? New, the Knicks can't be bringing in more than three or four pretty players at a time, man. New York, like, <laughs> we need dogs. Chuck. Yeah, 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 we need yeah, some yeah, dogs exactly, in here, man. man. It's like, man, mm-hmm. it's like Pat <laughs> Riley, man, who, listen, I'm, I grew up with Red Holtzman. Pat Riley, man, was hey, to me, as a Nick fan, he delivered my most heartfelt, as I feel, years ever. He brought, I mean, and everybody thought that he going to bring L.A. and Showtime. They, they didn't do their research. Pat Riley is hardcore, upstate, ugly ass, <laughs> Schenectady. Man. You know what I'm saying? Schenectady. <laughs> on a, you ever been in Schenectady on a, on a cloudy day, man? Really? Cloudy I day. mean, for real. I mean, Nothing but despair Am- out there, man. Am- Amsterdam, <laughs> New York, man. I mean, come on, man. So he knew how to really come down in the downstate New York and break and pick up a star. I mean, galvanizer Starks, who got picked up the year before. Yep. Yep. Anthony Mason. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Oak, yeah. you know, galvanized Oak. Even guys like Anthony Bonner, he would bring in. Yeah, He'd be like, yeah. yo, it's going to be a problem. X-Man. Well, yeah, X-Man, was a fantastic man. interview Appreciate watching it. the X-Man. Yeah. I mean, it warmed my heart, man. I said, <laughs> X-Man. Because yeah. when the X-Man, I mean, I don't cry as a grown man for too much stuff. But, man, when X-Man left, I was like, oh, the tears, man. I was <laughs> I was in tears. I mean, oh this can't God. happen, man. I, you know what? For the longest, I said Jordan. That was Jordan, man, that did that, man. He had to be, you know, Jordan had to, had to orchestrate the X Man leaving. That's what I was thinking all the time. Man. I did it to Isaiah, did it to X Man, did it to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, be, before Rhyme and Chuck, um, the visual arts. You know, graphic yes, design, that that was really your, your first love. And and I you know, when we talked about o- over the season the Nick Jersey, how much it has fallen off. And, right. and we coined the the, the the Dollar Tree jersey. It's got to go, Chuck. They took away the yeah. arts. It, it's not the Dollar Tree jersey, it's the Dollar Tree font. The font. The, the font. font. JL, J, JL's got that artistic background. He just enlightened me on too. He knows what I mean by that. Yeah, I know like, you're Dollar Tree font. Man, you, did, you went and, and got some press up letters, and you you tacked them on the uniform. Listen, man, you're dealing with six and six foot five and seven footers. You can deal with with fonts that arc, man. It's tall. It's fashion statement, man. Yeah, you man. don't you don't make a seven footer look like he's five two, man. <laughs> they got the Muggsy, they got the Muggsy Bogues font up on there, man. It's, it's like those are big man. dudes, man. Like it, it's terrible. Right. So it's so terrible, in, in the in the quickness, you know, you and I were talking about the, the history of the jersey and what were kind of some of your favorite designs. And you went right. ahead and made some custom mock-ups, man. You know, what mm-hmm. you, yeah. you think about these? 
Yeah, well, you gonna show them up there? You yeah, got yeah, them I got there? them up. I got yeah, them up. Go. Yeah. Okay, because I can't see them on your screen, but I already made them, so I, 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 I would, I would say that. Listen, whoever does the Knicks alternative uniforms, they on point. Their, their alternative jerseys are on point. Yeah. They're home yeah. in a way with the New York thing. Everything is right except for the final. Who came up gotta, with that? Got to change it. I don't know why they changed it, man. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know, know why man. they changed no, it. No knock on Dollar Tree unless y'all give us stock. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Trump for president who said, dude, we ain't saying we ain't saying you got to go home, but you got to <laughs> come out of yeah. here. I, you know I, what I'm saying? I don't know what they were doing with it, man. But I, I love the sketches you made. Uh, very on point. The the ones you did for me, the, the I, I went with the all black look. I went with the all black look. All the the black, fan right? base Gangsta. has been looking for um the black design. So that's that's the one I, I went with with the blue down the side. And I I like right. the um the sixty four the round ball logo, the rounder logo that they had. I, I wasn't really feeling okay. the, the triangle one's all right. Um right, but I right, I like right. the old one that they were rocking back back in the seventies time. And even when you and first got there, early '80s, they still had that that round ball right. look, man. Right. The uniform, the uniforms. If we want to talk modern days, the uniform that they had from '97 yeah. to 2003 were, were, were the best as they they could possibly be. Great combination of, of black, orange, blue, mm-hmm. uh, white popping off the letters, man. All perfectly arced, man. You're dealing with two words: New York. You're yeah. not dealing mm-hmm. like with you know. Indiana, you know, which you might be able to do, the, you know, <laughs> you might be able to do the, the, the Muggsy Bogues font, man. But really, New York, man, New York is big, man. It's like New York. I mean, you got to say yeah. New York like that, too. New York. You got to make it from New York. Yeah. <laughs> New York. Throw some bass in that voice. Man. Exactly. <laughs> really. And you know, listen, man, people are like, man, I thought you from Long Island. My mother and my father. Born and raised on 151st Street between Broadway and Amsterdam. There you go. That ain't New York, man. That, what? City, city, man, been in your just, blood, man. Mm-hmm. City, been in my blood. I mean, the Nets played, you know, the Nets played on Long Island. I'm right in Roosevelt, man. Dr. J from Roosevelt. My dad would be like, so you following the little Nets or you sticking with the Knicks? <laughs> <laughs> I hope Steve Mills was a better basketball player back in the day than he was an executive, Chuck. Because I don't yeah. know, man. We've been kind of set back. I know you don't want to, you know, that's, that's your boy from, know, from back know, in the day. Hey, you know Steve, what I'm saying? Steve Mills, Doug Mills, those are my boys. You know, I think if I have to say anything, he for a lot of the situations under the cap. And um, he, brought, he, he brought the players in that, came to fix something. I don't know what happened. Yo, everybody tried to act like Phil Jackson then has a hedge clippers. Phil Jackson <laughs> brought in a, a hedge clippers, man. Steve Mills was running the garden. He wasn't running the Knicks. This yeah. dude brought in the hedge clippers and start cutting like, like you know, high top fades, man. Blind. <laughs> blindfolded. Cass, Cass is, yeah, blindfolded. Cass <laughs> is getting out of the Nick Barber chair like, yo, this dude got to go, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, and understand, well, you know, I'm growing up. Phil Jackson, you know, we they Marv Albert, here comes Phil, Phil the windmill, you know, like, and then Phil Jackson became, became this basketball guru under Red Holtzman. And but you know, as with everything, man, mm. sometimes I mean, because you're good and you're great, sometimes you hit that dead road and some things gotta end, or you or you catch the L. He mm. caught an L that we might not be able to get out of, man. I mean, we might get out of the pandemic quicker than losing seasons. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, so whenever somebody throws something at Mills, I'm saying Mills ran the garden. He was like, oh, he could get you in on, on a skating, you know, you know, maybe get, get you in a WNBA game and stuff like that. And then they say, okay, listen, come in the next. But he inherited a monster, man. He had a monster. I thought that the Knicks, when we had, Woodson, the first time around, what was wrong with that? Ask Phil. You got to ask Phil, man. He wasn't Derek Fisher. He, yeah, he, he wasn't this triangle coach. He, 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 I don't know what Phil was trying to do, man. And you know what? Here's, 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 a, here's a note that I bring this up to tell you how much a Nick fan I am. Mm-hmm. Where I'm at, 3,000, 2,000 miles away, me and my dad would watch the Knicks, the Knicks, right? He in Atlanta. I'm West Coast. So I'll be like, all right, I ain't going to talk to you. Stuff like that, you know, like then we see something go on with the Nick. My my father died. You know that poor Zingas, he needs to gain some weight, man. He ain't gonna be around for long. He gonna get hurt. They're like, all right, Dad, all right. But coincidentally, on a note that that was a note I couldn't bring up before, 
my dad passed the day that Derek Fisher got fired. Man. Oh, wow. So oh. I never could. You know, of course, I'm in a swirl after that. Yeah, but yeah. I could hear my dad that day like, look, man, this dude. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a trip, man. It's a, it was a, it's a trip, you know. So that's how long I've been a Nick fan to the point where it could really. I just on my dad. I don't have my dad no more to go back and forth with the frustration. Mm -hmm, so I kind of mm -hmm. like lived that through you guys without Appreciate interjecting it. or interacting, man. But that that's that, and I'm telling you, my dad sat me at his knee at 67. So we had like from 67 to 2016. I'll go figure out the math, right? Yeah. So yeah. So so in 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 that replacement, seeing you guys. Also, with the help of technology and social media, not having to wait always for something on TV to present the NBA and then get around to the Knicks, mm -hmm. you know, that on that high level, it's cool. But from the seat level, nothing could beat that, man, because you get the real of the real. And Spike has been inviting me to Nick, Nick games since the 80s. And I keep telling Spike, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sit next to you in a Nick game. And we never have ever done it. <laughs> but... But, you know, we're going to catch up. My mom went to high school with Cal Ramsey. So, you know, yeah. I mean, for years, I went. Uh, last time I was, I went to the garden and, uh, and uh, Stephen and brought me up and I saw Cal Ramsey. He said, say hello to your mom and all that. So, uh, I mean, still, you know, we, we, we intertwine. 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 Yeah, intertwine, in, in, in man. Because, you know, we, I, get, I get it wherever I go. Cats be like, Knicks. And they expect me as a Knicks fan, all of a sudden, yeah. not be a Knicks fan because we ain't winning. I mean, that, that's some... To me, I think that's a millennial yeah. issue. Nah, too. I can't like, do that. Yeah. You, you, you we, we don't jump shit, man. We your don't team. jump like, shit. It's like, come on, man. Matter of nah. fact, it's a beauty in coming up, man. It's a beauty in coming yeah. up. Like, I, I would I would say this case in point. Mm. I, You know, looking across when the Pistons were coming up. Couldn't you just see that? Because the Knicks were also finding our way. But the Pistons, they start coming up. They were playing in the Silver Dome, and they had Trapuca. And, and, and Isaiah came in there and they start adding these little pieces and Sally goes there from Georgia Tech and Rodman comes out of nowhere and Chuck Daly comes from the Sixers and the Cavaliers and you just start seeing these pieces come in there and we're like, whoa, they put something that seemed like out of nowhere. And then the Knicks were assembling ourselves and with the Patino and then went to Pat Riley. So these things don't happen overnight but they happen with specific moves that also the fans could feel man but i do i said man it's not a beauty pageant playing in new york and if it was that was back then in the future it's only going to be a bigger microwave man it's going to be harder than ever True. and i don't belong, i don't buy into that well cats don't want to come to new york because of da 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 nah man cuz when you big in new york playing basketball and that and that garden is set off there ain't no other nothing, place. Nothing, and no I played place like all those places. I played every arena, man. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Garden? And I played the Garden three times, yeah. man. Well, yeah. What was your favorite memory at MSG playing yeah. as, as an artist? I got a few. Okay. Uh, one time I went there, it was just us and Anthrax. Right. And it was like, it was funny because all the fans, they had burned seats. I'm like, this one's going down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they burned seats. It was mega death. It was, a, it was an all metal tour, man. It was yeah. like burning seats in the garden. I'm like, what? I mean, a black person ain't getting away with lighting the match up in here. They were burning. Megadeth went on, they were burning seats, bro. I'm in the garden. I guess they say if they burn it down, all these fans can pay for it. But, you know, a rap concert comes in there, man. Yeah, you like, what's you know, going on? Yo, man, 87, Rebel Without a Pause comes out, man. And, you know, the crowd at my rookie year looked like a giant pizza. Mm. So here I'm in New York. You already you getting drowned out by request, and I got a whole section for cousins and all that. <laughs> and, and the record was the hottest record in New York at that time. Mm -hmm. We set it off. Place goes bananas. Cats Brooklyn is running through the aisles, turning cats <laughs> upside down, ripping goofy <laughs> earrings out of out of six. The ears. stick up I'm kids like, are running through it. <laughs> yo, man, it was the Latin Quarter that grew to twenty thousand. Man, it was like. Yo. <laughs> We couldn't stop the song, man. So, um, another memory of the garden, you know, uh, we against 40 ounces. So I bring a bunch of, you know, like eight MC, you know, Naughty by Nature, mm -hmm. Queen Latifah. Um, you go ghetto boys, bring them all in the garden. And we, we did a rallying campaign. And I had the giant malt liquor bottle, man. And, and, and we desecrated and hung a Klansman. 
in the garden. So, I mean, that's public enemy for you, man. And man. so, uh, yeah, my guys, man, I mean, seriously, uh, they got stories to tell. Yo. <laughs> it's like, I, we're a family, trust me. I like family. We see family when it's time to get down, but it could be like a barbecue, bro. It could be like, <laughs> it could be like a barbecue. <laughs> Yo, do you know, like me, look, look, me, Flavor, and Dennis Rodman, post concert. Dennis Rodman was a voice of reason. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Den Dennis was a voice That's of reason. That's all you man. need to know yeah. right there. That's got flavor, got flavor in Dennis. And Dennis is explaining. <laughs> and Dennis.